Hi, this is Tim with Canton Termite and Pest Control. Generally, when people call us out, they want us to take care of a bug problem. But we don't often talk about all the good that insects do in the world. Watch this video. I think you'll find it educational. Pollinators are animals, generally insect but can be mammalian or avian, that fertilize plants. This fertilization results in the formation of seeds and fruit. These incredibly hard-working animals help pollinate nearly 75% of our crops and over 75% of our flowering plants. Often, we may not notice the hummingbirds, bats, bees, beetles, butterflies, and flies that carry pollen from one plant to another as they collect nectar. Yet, without them, wildlife would have fewer nutritious berries and seeds and we would miss many fruits, vegetables, and nuts, like blueberries, squash, and almonds, not to mention chocolate and coffee, all of which depend on pollinators. With so much relying on these little animals, I regret to inform you that many pollinators are in decline. A couple reasons for the decline are as follows. Loss of basic habitat, intensive use of agrochemicals, including misuse of pesticides, herbicides that remove important floral resources, pest and disease affecting domesticated pollinators, honeybees, and may spread to wild population. Over-reliance on domesticated honeybees that drives out wild pollinators from lack of resources. With all of this knowledge, you may be distraught, thinking, what can we do about it? There are some things you can do to help. Firstly, you can plant a pollinator garden for wild pollinators. Secondly, you can provide nesting sites for bees and other pollinators. Lastly, you can feed hummingbirds and butterflies at your own home, but make sure you know how to properly feed them. In 2010, honeybees contributed to over 19 billion in crops in the U.S. alone. Now I'll tell you how pollinators, specifically bees, pollinate plants. When a bee connects nectar and pollen from the flower of a plant, some pollen from the stamens, the male reproductive organ of the flower, sticks to the hairs of her body. When she visits the next flower, some of this pollen is rubbed off onto the stigma or tip of the pistil, the female reproductive organ of the flower. When this happens, fertilization is possible, and a fruit carrying seeds can develop. Honeybees often come to mind first when people think of pollinators. However, many different animals, including other insects, other bee species, butterflies, beetles, flies, some birds, and some bats are pollinators. Indeed, there are an estimated 300,000 species of flowering plants worldwide that require animal pollinators. This tremendous floral variety supports a wide diversity of pollinators. And the vast majority of these pollinators are insects. For example, while there are only 1,000 vertebra pollinator species, it's estimated that there are at least 16,000 different species of bees worldwide, and every one of them is important for the continued survival and nature of this orbiting mass of rock we call home. Well, that was very interesting. I find that even after 30 years in this business, I'm still constantly amazed by insects. I love to post content about them, and hopefully you'll check back with us from time to time to see what's new. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Here's hoping you live pest-free.